Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokos Mystery. This will be part 326. We're continuing with our lesson series, Current Realities End. In other words, the end to this current order, this current state of existence that man thinks is so permanent, so rigid, <coughs> And so, <clears throat> long-lasting. In essence, the scripture tells us it's not permanent, it's not everlasting, and it's going to radically change. Turn to Daniel, 7th chapter, verse 23. <clears throat> Daniel 7, verse 23. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms. It's going to be altered. It's going to present a totally different reality. And will devour the whole earth. Its reality will envelop the entire world and everybody on it and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. So the reality, the fourth kingdom is going to replace the current Adamic reality. Why? Because the human race is forfeiting its position of custodianship on the earth. Therefore, the conditions that the human race necessitate to endure and to continue are not going to be the same conditions for superior races, superior races that will supplant the human race. So we should understand that not only is the Lord changing the conditions through the judgment, but the Luciferians are bringing their own conditions within those new changed conditions. Yes, it's inevitable. They're bringing the state of existence in which they were created to exist. <coughs> and... Um, Actually, before the creation of man, those, those conditions existed on the earth. So all we're looking at is a restoration of what existed at a time prior to man's advent. At the point of the Luciferians being held back in the subterranean regions and mitigated somewhat in the heavens, I'm talking about the second streets. Was there any noise, shout, anything from the Lord telling them that there was a change of reality? No, it wouldn't need to be. They would, they would just know, wouldn't they? Sure. They'd be overtaken by the new conditions. Right. Uh, <clears throat> that's why it's so important to look at the scripture <coughs> from the perspective of God, not the perspective of man. Because the perspective of man is looking at scripture from a linear, uh, temporal state of existence. And that is not what uh, basically is uh, <coughs> true reality. True reality exists in a state of plurality because God does not create life uh, in confinement like planetary existence does. What we are, where we are now, is a temporary state which God has constructed for a particular time and a particular purpose. After that time and that purpose has elapsed, life is going to be engendered in a way in which <clears throat> only those that are able to adapt to it will be able to endure it. Having said that, let's take a look a little further at what's being said here. As it pertains to this new state, this new reality, this new state of existence, we want to take a look at what I call the mystery sea. 
Scripture teaches the existence of a hidden sea which is wrapped in a cloud and separated from the earth by doors, bars, and gates. Turn to Job, the 38th chapter, verses 8 to 11. Commensurate with the new reality that will envelop the earth, things are going to manifest on the earth. And uh, commence to dominate the way of life on earth. Job 38, verses 8 to 11. Or who shut up the sea with doors when it break forth as if it had issued out of the womb. So what's being said here is a time in which this, the sea was connected to the earth and because of an event that took place which was the fall of the Luciferians, the sea became separated from the earth, sectioned off, partitioned off from the earth. When I made the cloud the garment thereof, and thick darkness a swaddling band for it. So what we're given here are the parameters that separate this ocean, the sea, from Adamic reality. It's housed within a cloud and the element of thick darkness. And break up for it my decree, decreed place, and set bars and doors. And said, Hitherto shalt thou come, but no further. Here shalt thou proud waves be stayed. So the sea <coughs> is disconnected from the earth supernaturally by barriers that were erected to keep it separated for a time. Now this sea is discussed at length in the scripture. <clears throat> scripture describes this region as teeming with life and having an advanced civilization of kings and rulers. Turn to Psalms 104. We're going to read verses 24 to 30. Psalms 104. 24 to 30. <clears throat> the life that exists in this sea is radically different from life as it exists in Adamic reality. And we have to understand that this sea is still operating it is still functioning. It never stopped functioning. The civilization never shut down. The activities within it, the life forms within it are still there. The only difference is it's separated from Adamic reality and life on earth. <clears throat> Psalms 104:24. O Lord, how manifold are thy works in wisdom. Thou hast made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. So is this great and wide sea, wherein are things creeping innumerable, both small and great beasts. There go the ships. There is that Leviathan, whom thou hast made to play therein. These wait all upon thee, that thou mayest give them their meat in due season. <coughs> <clears throat> that thou gavest them, they gather. Thou openest thine hand, they're filled with good. Thou hidest thy face, they are troubled. Thou takest away their breath, they die and return to their dust. Thou sendest forth thy spirit, they are created. 
and thou renewest the face of the earth. So we get the understanding that the sea <clears throat> was at one time attached to the earth. At the time of the, the great upheavals in the creation, this was separated, but it still functions. There are two elements in the sea. One good, the other evil. The Luciferians took over a part of this great sea, and a part of this great sea remained under a loyalty to God. <coughs> so when we hear uh, Isaiah 30, I think, Ezekiel 28, one verse 2, I made the mention the, the to shake at the sound of his fall is the great upheavals that you're referring to. Yes. And that disconnected the hidden sea to where it is today. In other words, purely in a spiritual dimension. No, physical dimension. It's a physical, yeah. physical dimension, but separated by barriers. Right. So if you're, if you're saying the barriers are placed at that point, this is the Peleg point, isn't it? Well, that was before Pele. <laughs> yeah, long before, because the human race wasn't in existence at okay. the time. So then, the Pele part is in addition to the gates, bars, windows, and doors. Yes. Mm. Which will also retrograde at the time of the beginning of sorrows. Right. <clears throat> now, a hint about this great sea is if you are familiar with the Bermuda Triangle phenomenon, mm. and you're familiar with the five torpedo bombers that disappeared, <clears throat> they basically thought that they had triangulated a course back to their base. But they ran into <clears throat> what was considered an anomaly where the instruments totally wiped out. Their compasses wouldn't give them direction. Their, uh, uh, um, their finders, they couldn't even tell how, how high and what altitude they were flying in. All they could tell was they went into a cloud. And in this cloud, they could look, and down at a certain level was a vast sea, which <clears throat> they were unfamiliar with. And they kept they were in radio contact with Florida, with the base where they took off, and kept asking for triangulation direction to confirm what course they are. And <clears throat> the base couldn't make a connection. And they were trying to get their direction finders acclimated but the, the, they wouldn't line up with anything, and torpedo bombers couldn't line up with anything, but they said, all we can see is this vast ocean, and there are islands there. And they kept flying until they ran out of fuel, and they said, well, we're gonna ditch, and uh, try to find a coordinate so you can send rescue, a rescue uh, plane for us. They ditched, and then shortly after that, the communications shut down. Do you believe that what humans call Atlantis is one of those islands? Uh, <clears throat> Atlantis, which is called Poseida, is a continent, vast region, yeah. But it isn't actually an island, but, surrounded by water. But I'm asking you whether you believe it's one of those islands. In other words, yeah. are the Luciferian matrix? Yes, I do. Oh, Atlantis, really? Atlantis, Lemuria, it's five continents. <laughs> Sorry, no, because I watched the YouTube, but Atlantis is the original before um, before the world, or was that Pang, Pang, Pangea? Pangea. Pa oh, that, I'm thinking about Pangea. So Pangea isn't Luciferian, right? That well, it's Pangea. what remnant of uh, something that they cocked up, concocted. There's supposed to be five continents that existed about the time of um, the creation of man. Polaria, Hyperborea. Lemuria, Atlantis, yeah. and a region that later came to be called uh, Adoma, which was a region of the humans. Mm -hmm. wow. <coughs> anyway, it's all been covered up. The government knows a lot that they're not saying, and they will uh, kill to keep it secret. It. <laughs> anyway, let's continue on. So what we find existence of this civilization, this ocean civilization, this great mystery sea. Now, <clears throat> scripture indicates after the establishment of the fourth empire, in other words, the fourth empire takes up residence on the earth, 
and <clears throat> manifest this new reality, then the mystery sea, the hidden sea is going to come forth. After the establishment of the Fourth Empire, this sea will dominate all life on the surface through the medium of trade passing through it. In other words, the civilization that currently exists is a trading civilization, and it's going to expand onto the new <coughs> Earth region because now the barriers that formerly kept it confined are going to be wide open. So those princes who are the traders who live on their ships, they're, they're sea dwellers, are they only one nation who behaves like that? No. All the nations. There's a series like of nations. The superior races, yes. Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about they all live in their ships. No. So they, they live on the island. Okay, so then the trading nation that I'm talking about, the princes, they're the only ones who live on their ships. Nobody lives on the ship. The ship is used for transport. Okay. Everybody has a habitation. Gotcha. Which is one of <coughs> You're going to have merchants as well as the, 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 the sea faring individuals. Right. <coughs> the ocean is where they all live. Okay. The sea is where they all live. The liberty of trade, the rulers of the earth will be beings who come from the sea. Ezekiel 26, verses 16 to 17. This talks about when the main <coughs> uh, trade center, which is called the Harlot City, is destroyed. It's going to um, it's going to manifest great upheavals in the sea. So, starting in verse. Fourteen, uh, verse fifteen, Ezekiel twenty-six, and we're going to read the verse seventeen. Wait till everybody gets there. Seventeen. Uh, we're starting at fifteen. We're going to read down to seventeen. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord God to Tyrus, which is the name of the city that's destroyed. Shall not the isles shake at the sound of thy fall? When the wounded cry, when the slaughter is made in the midst of thee. So this is talking about the great islands in the sea are going to be shaken at the time that this main island city state is wiped out, which of course is wiped out by the ten kings and the beast. Then all the princes of the sea shall come down from their thrones and lay away their robes, put off their broidered garments, they shall clothe themselves with trembling, they shall sit upon the ground, and shall tremble at every moment, and be astonished at thee. So the earth at this time is basically a water planet dominated by islands, surrounded by water. They have set up a trade um, system which dominates life the luciferian civilizations there's five luciferian kingdoms gold kingdom silver kingdom bronze kingdom the human kingdom and of course the iron kingdom and they're all basically <clears throat> a, like a wheel circling this spoke this this center which is a harlot city She's going to be destroyed. When she's destroyed, the smoke and the ruin go up and everything grinds to a halt. <clears throat> and 
and the sea kings, the sea princes, the rulers, which are sea beings, go into a state of mourning because now their livelihood, their way of life is disrupted and they have no way to replace it. Right. Right. Well, they live in the sea but they live in the islands and not actually in the sea. Yes, okay. but they basically, you can't look at them from a human perspective. Sure. I'm trying not to. Yeah, it's, they're, limitations. they're not human. They are probably <sighs> adapted amphibious. They can live on land, they can live in the ocean. Okay, okay. I, I have a reptilian picture in mind. Mm -hmm. So, what we've just read happens during the 70 year period before the Harlots becomes into its home or after the 70 year period? This? Yeah. No, this is way after. This is the end of the first half of the tribulation period. So then the Heart City is already gone? Well, this is the Heart City. It's been destroyed by the beast who now has come up with the I, Ten I, Kings. I said that. The Heart City is already gone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, and, <laughs> yeah, at this point, right. we're talking about what the effect of her going out of vogue is meaning. It means that this civilization is ground to a halt now. Right. Now the beast is going to take over and he's going to manifest his own civilization which ultimately will <coughs> engulf this one <coughs> and this is what this is what you're going to have so we should understand that the beast absorbs this training system and just renames it enhances it expands it however you want to call it yeah well he radically changes it to a more of a land-based gotcha. rather than a sea-based right. trading center but the point is he takes that system and Remanufactures it. Remanufactures it plus what he has already had. It's the ten kings who already have a system going right. that they're going to expand to encircle and engulf this one. Amalgamate it into what they want and you're going to have a transformation. But when we hear the ten kings who have no kingdom yet, what do we understand from that yet? The, t the kingdom we're referring to is the surface kingdom. Okay, but so, all right, okay. Sweat, no problem. <laughs> but let's go. Uh, so what we see here, <clears throat> the ocean, this mystery sea, is the center of activity. This point. Now, <clears throat> Scripture teaches ultimately the serpent kings who rule from the sea, this sea, will be wiped out at the return to earth of the Lord to set up the kingdom of God. These kings are called serpent kings, dragon kings, because <coughs> they're Luciferian uh, serpent races. They're like tokens. Yes. Yeah. Isaiah 27 verse 1. <coughs> In that day, the Lord, with his sword, great and strong sword, shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, that crooked serpent, <clears throat> and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. So start talking about the race of the serpent rulers that have dominated uh, and will continue to dominate until they're put down at the second coming. My note would tell me there are three different serpent races. Can you explain them that little bit? Well, there's probably more than three, sure. but basically, I think it's talking about three characteristics of the serpents okay. that they manifest. Because they are in within the serpent races, <coughs> you have rulers, you have 
vassals and you have sub races. Which is the next principle. <clears throat> the scripture teaches this sea will experience the wrath of Satan and the judgment of God. So both the Luciferian forces under Satan are going to tremendously uh, bring ruin to the sea and ultimately God through the Prototokos group is going to bring ruin to this sea. You say, well, why are both of them? Because each judgment, Satan's wrath is not on the Luciferians, it's on those that are loyal to God who are in the sea. And God, under the time of the judgments, is going to wipe out everything that is turned to the Luciferians. So there's a lot of politics that are going to be going on in this time. And take a look at what's, what the scriptures just, talk just about. Just before you go ahead, I, I imagine there can't be too many groups who are loyal to the Lord and yet live in the same. Oh, there are. Hmm. Turn to Revelation 12, 12. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. So you're going to have humans, just like the air, uh, confined in the heavens, they're going to be in the, in the sea, under Luciferian overseers, that have turned, repented, and turned to God. At the time that uh, the satanic forces are cast out of heaven, come down to the over regions of earth. He's going to take on his, out his wrath on everything loyal to God, whether on the earth or in the sea. So, back to a previous lesson, we understood in excuse me, one minute. Mm -hmm. Verse 11. <clears throat> and they that overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives into the death. Mm -hmm. I'm understanding that specific group to be in the heavens somewhere, having been abducted. Yes. But that doesn't preclude the possibility that there may be other groups similar who are in the seas. Oh, sure. When the Fourth Empire comes up, it's going to dominate, it's going to add to things that didn't exist on the earth before. Remember, this is a Luciferian trading system. Turn to Revelation 18. <clears throat> Verse 17. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. For in one hour, so great riches has come to naught. And every shipmaster, in all the company of in ships, and sailors, and as many as trade by sea, stood afar off, and cried when they saw the smoke of a burning, saying, "What city is like unto this great city?" So you have trade <coughs> going through the sea, the islands. On the surface and below the sea, the trade is all extensive. Well, you have humans that are there being used, just like you have them in the heavens being used to facilitate this trade well, that system. Clear just now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in Revelation 8, verse 8.
in Revelation 8, verse 8. This is the time of the Prototokos judgment. The second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea. And the third part of the sea became blood. Why just the third part? <clears throat> Turn to Revelation 12th chapter, verse 4. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered to devour her son, a child as soon as it was born. Well, the third part come down and take control over the sea at the time that Satan takes control over the heavens. He takes control over a third of the creation. So when the judgment falls, it's going to fall in the third under his control. Land, sea, heaven, stars, sun, all the rest of it. <coughs> Except, but what if, there are, what if there aren't any humans in that third who have repented prior to the point of this happening? They'd be protected. Okay. God never pours judgment out on the, on the innocent. Right. Now the sea is unique. The sea will outlast the earth. Turn to Revelation 20. Revelation 20, verse 11. At this point, the whole physical creation no longer exists. It's been wiped out. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. So at this time, everything that currently exists has gone out of existence. It's been burned up. <clears throat> the elements uh, no longer exist. There's no matter left anymore as we know it. <clears throat> the sea still exists, though. Drop down to verse 13. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. So this great sea still exists. After this physical universe has gone out of existence. So you could say that the great sea, death and hell, the dimensions or part of what was previously the earth matrix are the residual after everything else is gone. Yes, it means that they're constructed differently than what you have here. Because the, they weren't the, they weren't open to the forces that took out the rest of the universe. The rest of the universe, <clears throat> the elements melted with great heat, and the life forms on them died. But the sea and the dead that was in it still existed. It's going to go out of existence. Turn to Revelation 21. Verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. So everything dealing with existence here, no matter what it's composed of, it's going out of existence by the time of the end of the millennium. There will be no 
matter, no existence that's connected with matter that will endure. Yes. It's all gonna after this sea. This is the last thing in the physical that remains. The sea after that, it all goes back to because it says a new. I have and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Mm -hmm. So does it start again since he's the beginning and the end, or does it? It's just the black. <laughs> Everything's no, no. The new heaven gone. and the, the new heaven and the new earth replace what was once the sea and the old heaven and, and the old earth. The new heaven and the new earth are eternal. They never pass away. The old heaven, the old earth, and the sea are temporary. So it's at this point, Revelation 21, 1, that everything that is righteous from a location perspective becomes part of the timeline. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. It says, wherein dwells righteousness. Yes. New heaven, new earth, not physical. Yes, everything spiritual. That's why during the millennium, you're going to have all the Adamic souls that exist in the paradise region are going to incarnate on the earth. <clears throat> why? Because they have to be given the opportunity to qualify for life on the new earth. Oh, so you're talking about the people who came before Jesus. Oh, well, we're talking about the Adamic race that was created in Genesis, the first chapter. Like they got wiped out. No, turn to Genesis, the first chapter. I'll address your question. Thank you. First chapter. Yes. Verse 26, 27. Twenty six. God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Now, <clears throat> Genesis, the first chapter, is not talking about a physical creation. It's talking about a spiritual creation. Remember, man is triune being. Body, soul, spirit. This is when his soul is created. His eternal part. Turn to the book of Psalms. Psalms 139. Then we're going to come back to Genesis. Verse 14. Psalms 139, verse 14. You read oh, that. Okay, I have a question. Sorry, you said mind, body, soul. So Genesis 127 is the soul, but the mind and the body is after. No. The mind, what you call the mind, is integral to the soul. Okay, so, so when it creates one. the soul, that's the seat of your personality, the seat of your being that will always exist. But the mind goes with the body since it's temporary. body is integral. I mean, the mind is integral to the soul, not okay. the body. Sorry. Okay, so I'll read it. 139. 14. 14. Okay, it says, um, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Correct. Read it again. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My soul knoweth right well. So what he's talking about 
Integral to your soul is your memory. Whatever your soul has ever experienced is locked in your memory. David talks about in Psalms, he lay on his bed and he take his memory back to its origins. The soul knows its origin. This is David illustrating his origin. My soul knows how I was made is what he's saying. Now, notice what he goes on to say. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. David was not created, his soul was not created on the surface, his soul was created in the interior, subterranean region, in the spiritual realm. Oh. Read it again. Yes, it says, um, my substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Read it again. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Wrought is like made, right? Yes. Wow. So that's like when the lowest parts, of the, that's subterranean. They don't want us to know. This origin is in the subterranean. I'll turn to Genesis, the second chapter. Um, is subterranean under the earth? Yes, earth. that's what it means. Genesis chapter. Second chapter. When you get there, I want you to read verse 7. <clears throat> okay, it says... Um, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. And Stop. Read it again. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Read it again. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Where was man? That was body. Right? Exactly. That was body. So, this is um, mind and soul is Genesis one. Mm -hmm. Just call it personality. Because that incorporates everything about you. Personality. Okay, okay. Mind and, and soul. Mind and soul is so indicative of Jung and Freud and the psychological yeah. nonsense. As Germans. Ach, I trust them. Nicht gut. <laughs> personality yeah. is what we're trying to Personality do. is what makes you who you are, right. a distinct individual. Yes. God didn't create two Josies. He only created one. Mm -hmm. The body was... And notice what it says, verse 7. Read the whole thing again. It says, um, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Keep going. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Man became. The word soul there is not the same as what you're talking about. The word soul comes from a Hebrew term, nafish. It means man became a living, breathing creature. Okay, yeah, like when they say every soul. That means every that creature. Every soul in this context is talking about the completed being, not the inner part of the individual. It depends on the context of the scripture. Let me say this, Mr. Jones. Yes. Man became physical. He was created spiritually, but here... He is formed physically. So I have Genesis 127 is the integral creation, and then Genesis 2 7 is the body. Put here. Genesis 1 27, he becomes man. Okay, thank you. Let us make man, Adam, after our image mm -hmm. and in our likeness. Genesis 2, 7, man becomes human. Genesis 2, 7? Yes. Man becomes human, okay. Yes. Because they're, that's when they're given Elohim, their soul. Elohim did not make him a breathing creature. He breathed, he breathed his life into him in the uh, 2, 7. Yes. In but 126, at 126 he, he spoke him into spoke existence. Into existence so spoke. That's why it makes him eternal. And then right here he breathes him. Mm -hmm. Yes. But remember, YHVH does the form in Genesis 2 7. Lord God. Oh, this is 2 7. YHVH. And then in 127, that was God. Elohim. Elohim. 
Oh, 